People consider us elite athletes. I think I'm just a guy that's been blessed to do something that I absolutely love. Riding racehorses, it's been a, a phenomenal career. I've had some major, major wins. Uh, Queen's Plate, Prince of Wales, Florida Derby, Caller Derby. I've got the opportunity to ride in the Kentucky Derby, which was an amazing thing itself. I mean, it just it was a phenomenal day. I probably have more stories than I have time to tell everybody about, but it's been a lot of fun and an amazing career. Horses have been my passion since I was two years old. I would do anything to get with them. I love them where they were mine, my uncles, my cousins, friends. I, I just wanted to be around them, be involved with them, and it's led to a phenomenal career. When you choose a career like this, it's not when you get hurt, it's how bad. I've been in the racing industry for 40 years, born and raised in Canada. I'm Gary Boulanger, better known as Boo. Dance through the dawn on the white cap. The last horse to load, they're at the post. They're off in the Queen's Plate Stakes. One final acceleration. Dance through the dawn, trying to hold on for 70 more yards. Like her mother, like her brother. Dance through the dawn, a Queen's Plate champion. Uh, the Mac McDalia State 2005, I was riding in hand. Um, race kind of set up that way. I was mid pack, making a move in the second turn, and uh, I hit a bad patch on the turf course, and he slipped and fell down, and eventually I got run over by two horses. Wide open, leaving the back stretch. Navasink River and Host are still one two. One went down around the far turn. In hand, went down, and he injured himself. When things like that happen, you you have no idea. I mean, it's over instantaneous. I mean, it's split seconds, and like you know, you're kind of your instincts kick in. You like the way you fall, how you roll, um, things like that are just either natural or you know you don't have any time to, to react to it. And you're doing 35 miles an hour, and then you get launched. I mean, you hit the ground, and you kind of roll, try to stay as small as possible, but it's over before you know. I mean, there's no time to think. Your protective mode kicks in when you get a hand injury. So I was, I didn't want to be touched, and then uh, they finally got me down, and they put me in C-spine, and I remember talking to them. They were telling me I was complaining I wanted to get up while I was trying to throw up, and they couldn't release me from C-spine because only a doctor could, so they're only paramedics, so now I was stuck there. When I finally got there, um, my blood pressure had dropped, and that's when they found the ruptured spleen and the, the ruptured liver. So they had rushed me in for surgery then. And then when I was coming out, that's when the head blew up, and that's when they found the head injury. So I had to go back in for another surgery. And all this is only told to me by my spouse, my agent, but remembering it myself, no recollection. It was hard on my wife at the time. It was hard on my kids. Um, they didn't know I was going to live or die for the first seven days. I mean, it was. The surgeon, only reason he thought I survived is I was so physically fit from racing. Um, he said the average person would never survive this accident. They're off in the Labatt Woodbine Oaks to the inside Turner's Hall and devastating as they move in front of us for the first time. And Danson in the Sun has emerged with the lead. Dance Through the Dawn is after her, but Dance Through the Dawn has got her at the 16th pole. And they're coming down to the line. And Dance Through the Dawn and Gary Boulanger win the Labatt Woodbine Oaks. Oh, that's good. Just hold it right there. Yeah. Let's 
I was in uh, the hospital for 31 days, and um, the cranial pressure was so bad in my head, they, I flatlined twice in the, in the second surgery when they did the, the scalectomy. Um, and my neurosurgeon said, I don't know how this kid survived. I really don't. The cognitive stuff was like really easily compared to the balance and learning to walk again. And because they like, they cut all your dura out. So they went through all your nerve ends in your head. So it, everything's kind of like, if it shoot and then it wouldn't connect. So then you get this little zap. So it, it was physically drooling on me for a long time. Everything they were trying me on wasn't working. The medication they had me on wasn't taking care of the migraines. I mean, I was battling them. Some days I wouldn't leave my room for like two or three days. And I, I could hear the slightest of sound and it just sent a jolt through my head. A light, and it dropped me in a second. Somebody took a picture of me, whew, I'd fall over. So it, it was an unbelievable battle. I didn't, I didn't see the light for a long time. I mean, it took me three years before I felt I could do things. In the 2005 accident, the injuries I sustained was a subdural hematoma to the right side of my head, a ruptured spleen, a, rupture, a lacerated liver, broken ribs on the right and left side, front and back. I detached the ligaments to my two middle fingers on my left arm, and um, that was it. <laughs> that was it, eh? Yeah. You got away light. Yeah. got off easy. <laughs> You know, back in 2013, I was working for Mark Cassie in Florida, and I was getting on all these really nice horses, like a delegation was there, and Mary, and all these phenomenal horses, and I'm breezing them, like, and Mark says, your clock is phenomenal, like, you're, like, you're never more than a fifth of a second off ever if you're off. And he made me breeze him with delegation one day, and, like, I put him away like it was nothing, you know, opened up five with delegation. And then when I come back to the barn, I had to go by Mark's office, and he's down there and says, what do you think? I says, Hey Mark, if I get cleared to ride, could I ride this horse? And I kept going, put him in a stall, and he chases me around in a stall. He says, are you, are you thinking about riding again? I says, Mark, ride this kind? Absolutely. I says, you know, I'm doing everything that you can get hurt at in the morning. I'm breezing, I'm galloping. And so you get hurt just as bad in the morning as you can in the afternoon. I'm willing to take the risk, and I know what I can do. I'd rather be out there in the afternoon getting the rewards of what I've done in the morning. And he said, if you get cleared to ride, you can ride him. Well, he put me through all these different tests, passed them all, went to the racing commission. I got cleared February 14th, 2013. There was never a question in my mind. I mean, I always, you know, once I got back to getting on thoroughbreds and breezing, you know, I'm so comfortable out there. I'm so I feel like I'm just floating. I'm like, that's my, my, my comfort zone by far. And I was like, when I got back to racing, it was more just the initial getting back here. You were anxious. You had those little butterflies because like it was, you felt and people are all screaming, hey, boo, good to see you. Great to be back. You know, good luck, good luck, good luck. And when you finally win your first one, that's when it really hit. Like, this is, this is what I'm supposed to do no matter what. This is what I'm supposed to do. And they're off. Stride on the far outside, the stone tastic a step quicker now, along with our free roll. Gap with three more lengths, then back to Janice's Joy and Southern Honey joined. Less than one length off the lead, quarter mile to come. Stone tastic between horses. Lee Court on the outside, Southern Honey to their outside. Coming to the eighth pole, Lee Court puts ahead in front, and Stone tastic put to a drive. She's got to find more and find it quickly. Lee Court has the lead. Stone tastic fighting on, but second toward the inside. Southern Honey is third. 16th pole, Lee Court says this one is over. Lee Court, Gary Boulanger to take the Thoroughbred Club of America. Uh, they're off. Swiskin first to show in front with Lacey closing up second along the inside. Around the far turn, Salardic. Swiskin bobbles and falls on the turn. Lacey goes down with Cherry Berry. And around that far turn, it's all Salardic now.
A special moment on our Woodbine Oaks Day is the special presentation today of the Avelino Gomez Memorial Award. And there are no greater athletes than jockeys. Let's go down to Dawn for the 2017 recipient of this prestigious award, the Avelino Gomez Memorial Award. To this day, I'm still like, you know, you, you put out there with some pretty special people. And I, I don't see that in me. I just, I just think I'm a guy doing something I love to do. Congratulations to Gary Boulanger, this year's Avelino Gomez Memorial Award recipient. But uh, I'm, I was really highly honored. I like, guess still to this day, like I got the trophy in my mantle and you, you look at it, you know, here's a guy that died doing what he loves. And uh, he is the epitome of a jockey. And for people to see that in me and what I've gone through, it. Um, it kind of hit home pretty hard that he actually did die and you come close to dying and now you're look the same way he is and it, I was pretty honored. <laughs> In 2020, I got inducted to the Hall of Fame and um, I was like, wow, you know, you've accomplished a lot of things. You know, it's, uh, I was like, you know what? Another honor that you're like, you're not expecting. It's like something you think when you go out and you start being a jockey, well, I want to be a Hall of Famer. And you're like, yeah, I want to win the Queen's Plate or I want to win the Breeders' Cup. You, you, you kind of think of those things. I want to, I wanted to be the best I could be. I want to be as good as riders I could be. If that meant I was the best, then it was great. If it didn't, I was happy if whatever I accomplished. I always kind of set my standards high, but I never seen a Hall of Fame coming. I didn't ever think that's where I'd end up. And it, it was pretty honored to be people see me that way. They're at the post. They're off for the 2021 and 86th running of the Prince of Wales Stakes. And what a good even beginning. Hadassah tried to show some early speed and Hadassah goes on and passes. Hadassah hanging on grimly. Harlan Estate right at his throat latch. Hadassah, Hadassah is digging in deep. Hadassah is champion of the Prince of Wales Stakes. And Gary Boulanger engineers a great upset with Hadassah. Congratulations, everybody. Some people probably wonder, like, why are you still going? My body doesn't feel like it's done racing. My brain doesn't feel like it's done racing. And I absolutely love doing it. The day I don't like doing it, the day I'm scared or I got uncertainties about it, that's the day I'm going to hang it up. Man, I died twice. If I wake up, if I'm alive, I got a chance. I love what I do, man. I think it's an absolute gift that I get to do something I love so much.